Welcome, cherished viewers. It is once again the Process Horizon Chatroom series. I am Patricia Jifamen Salakai, a communication and leadership coach. I'm the founder of Parisus Horizon and also a two-time self-published author. My first book is entitled The Fearless, Fabulous and Flamboyant. And I also have Untangling That Tongue, No More Fear of Public Speaking. Both books can be accessed online from Amazon Kindle. And today I have in the studio another author joining me all the way from India. She is going to be in the chat room conversation with me, and we're talking about passion along with profession. She is Nelly Thomas, and she is a UI, what you would call user interface developer. And for the past three and a half years, she has been concentrating in this aspect in the IT space. She's currently working as an associate consultant in Infosys along with adopting new technologies, designing and building applications in profession, she has a passion for writing. And she's quite poetic at that. She has won several awards, including being part of the record winning uh, in the Asia and India novel industry. She will tell us more about that. Her book is entitled, I Scream. For those of you who may be listening to the podcast, don't get confused. The spelling is E-I-E-S and scream as in shout, make a loud noise. So we will go into the studio now and welcome Merlin to tell us more about herself. I am so excited to have you here and I know it has been a really testing time for our session today, but I look forward as always to an exciting discussion. I'm excited too. Thank you for such a great introduction. <laughs> a lot of our viewers may be wondering, okay, so who is Melly Thomas and what has she got to offer us today? So tell us more about you in terms of who are you? What has made you who you are? We want to learn about all those experiences that you have gone through from childhood till now that has birthed Nelly Thomas. <laughs> so by profession, as Patricia told, I'm a UI developer. But when it comes to a writer, I have more than that. So whenever someone asks who I am, I'm say, I'm more than a developer. So on Saturday, Sunday, I devote time for my passion of writing. And it started from my uh, school days when I used to write in diary entry. And it used to be for me. But when I came to college, I started writing for a local newspaper. And people used to like the content I curated in that. Such appreciation from parents and in church, I used to write as essays and articles and school, there is a essay writing competition. From all those things, the positive feedback I got, I thought I had something. I at first didn't acknowledge it as my talent, but later when I got a lot of feedback from others, I thought, yeah, it is something I should pursue, not as a career, but as my passion. So I wow. don't get bored. <laughs> that is interesting. So you have started even publishing in articles. I mean, publishing articles, you know, with the newspapers uh, locally. And yeah. based on the feedback you got, you decided to go into serious blogging. Yeah. So I write blogs, I write my poetry, collaborate with other authors to write anthology. And my first book, when it won an Asia Book of Records and India Book of Records for a narrative poetry, that was something cool. And I saw people from France and other countries purchase those books and they read it. That's wow. when I realized how I can use my writing to connect to people the people whom I might not know, but they are interested in reading my work. 
Wow. So one would ask, when you are writing, what do you think about in terms of who your audience are? Because you just mentioned people from Europe, even read your article, though you were in India, and it caught their attention, and they got in touch, and they got interested. So when you write, who are you targeting as your audience? I think my audience are people like me who are emotionally connect, who wanted to raise voice against few things which they see in society is a partiality because my book is based on a, it has been inspired by a real life story. It is That's a right. journey of an orphan child. So I think giving a voice to a woman is a greater concern in the society currently. I'm not a, like a feminist person, but I think we should have women rights. It's like we get rights, but it is not implemented correctly. It so, is not implemented correctly. And so yeah. we see it on paper, but it's not coming to life as yeah. we would have love to see it. And so for you, it is a means to be a voice for the voiceless. Yeah. So, so my one would want to, yes, one would want to find out a bit more. You mentioned that you were part of some co-authors for an anthology. Could you explain what it is? It's a big word. And yes. some young person or an adult like myself somewhere will be wondering, okay, what is that about? Probably they may have an opportunity to do same, but because they don't know what it is, they, they don't know that they have that talent or the capacity in them to be part of a project like that. So could you explain further what that was about? Yeah, the anthology was titled Introspection. It's when you, you are going to sleep. What are the thoughts that are in your mind? Are you happy with the current situation? Do you have any regrets? Or do you want to say something you didn't say? So you can say it in your poetry. You can write it down your feelings. So I do the same. When I left for a job to a new country, I was emotionally connected to that. So I wanted to write something for me, somewhere, something which I couldn't tell my parents while I was moving to a new city. I know it was difficult because I never moved out to somewhere else from this city. I was born here, brought up in Bhopal and everything. And suddenly moving into a new place where language I don't know, even though I know Hindi, but their Marathi is their official language. So mm -hmm. it was a great struggle for me, who has been taken care every time pampered by family to move out of my own. That time I started writing poetry. And when I shared at my office how I felt about my first time travel to a new city for a job, people applauded it and they wanted to hear such poetry from me so i thought in world there are many people like me who just move out to a new city for a job they wanted to hear how their that's feelings right. can be narrated yeah that's, that's right that's right and i i love that so much that is i mean part of the reason that i totally got hooked and i said I definitely have to have Merlin in the studio because from where I come from in Ghana, a lot of things are happening, a lot of um, things that people can tap into as a topic to write about, a topic for discussion or connecting with the rest of the world, sharing our culture, sharing our uniqueness to the world so that people can learn about the things that are going through the minds of the people. So for our viewers who are watching, you may be in the creative arts or in the performance industry. And this is an opportunity for you to connect with other like-minded people across the world and find out how can you co-author, probably even along similar lines, so that everybody is talking about a specific issue in the society from their perspective in terms of where they're coming from. And I am excited to know that you are doing all of this in your space. Now, our topic for today is passion along with profession. 
And yeah. what made you think about this topic in the first place? Yeah, so it's like I am the person who writes and as well as work in professional life in a quite a different way. So people say, why don't you become a full time writer? Why don't you stop your professional life and start working for your passion? So for those, I wanted to tell the difference between a profession and a passion. It can work along together. It is nothing which I should drop a professional life for my passion. When I get exhausted in my professional life, I want a space for a hobby to do something that will keep me alive. That is the passion I, perf I have for writing. If this writing becomes my profession, I will not enjoy the bit the way I'm enjoying it now. So it's balancing the both. From Monday to Friday, I am a UI developer. But on Saturday, Sunday, on weekends, I am a writer. So it's that not happy for me. Yeah. It's my escape place. It's my escape room. I love the fact. Yes. So, I mean, you have turned your, your, your hobby and, uh, you know, into that passion that drives you and gives you a place of comfort a place where you can speak your mind and be the voice for the voiceless while yeah. you still have your regular job and you go there if there's any stress or you know you feel tedious you know you have the the passion bit to cushion you and take out that stress yeah. and that is a lovely blend you don't necessarily need to forgo the other but you can let them work side by side yeah and I know that you also want to elaborate on the book, which has won the, the record in India and then in Asia as part of the book of records. So tell us about the, the rhymes. How do you even develop the rhymes? I know you need to find words that rhyme together. We've learned all that in basic school, but when it comes into this space, how do you find your rhymes? <laughs> it's like I cannot explain it, but I like to rhyme everything I say. It's mm. like what I do, my way, how I say, everything rhymes. So when I got to know I have a talent of writing things in rhymes and it has a ma uh, it makes meaning to people. So mm. I thought, why not to write a narrative story? Earlier, I used to write it as a poetry. It would finish in one to two pages. I wrote a complete novel with a story along with this rhyming. So this inspiration came when once I was reading a newspaper and I got to knew about a child was thrown into a garbage and which was found by a dog. And the dog was barking and the people around them didn't knew why the dog was barking and they were in their own space. So what this dog did he bought the child like he carries the puppy and placed the child over someone's house. That is when a person realized that the dog was helping them. It has more humanity than the actual humans. So wow. strike me, I should write this story. I should narrate it to the world in a way I want to tell them. In a positive way, how this child's journey begins. So exactly. this is the starting point of the book ice cream so okay yeah and what and what informed your choice of the title because i remember we had the discussion about the fact that if somebody's listening to a podcast or listening to the the name of the book you know via an audio communication they will be wondering wow she authored a book entitled ice cream well, what flavor was it? Did it have strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla? And then we realized that it wasn't actually a dessert, but it was talking about the ice through which we see and then something screaming. So what informed the, the, the choice of the, the title itself? Frankly speaking, more than writing the book, the title was the hard job to do. So it was purposely written ice cream. Like people think it is a dessert they feel it it is the best thing of a desert but when they actually see the ice cream is the ice and to scream 
it is something different the purpose of the book is what you think is not the right it might have another truth added to this that's so, right so looking beyond and trying to bring out that perspective or yeah. your i mean what you are thinking in your mind and actually bringing that out yeah it's we cannot trust our senses always it's like we heard it ice cream it is not what you hear you need to see it too to That's understand right. what it means yeah exactly do you have a copy of your book to show to us yeah it's like author's copy ice cream okay all <laughs> right if you can bring it a bit let me put you in on the spotlight and then you bring it a bit closer to the camera and we can see it okay there you go oh lovely wow ice cream ice cream that is amazing and copies of this book can be found on amazon as you rightly stated yeah so aside this do you have any other books that you have authored before yeah. we delve into your professional bit so i have uh, been one of the anthologies i have written in this whiskey in a teacup it's like i have a poetry over here wow well at this time would you love to read a little bit of what you wrote in whiskey in a teacup for us yeah sure each day before i sleep i introspect my life deep looking at the future and riding through the past remembering the moments which i wish to last the future i am heading to about my dreams that are due things i did wrong where i stood strong things i left behind behind each decision that my today design sustaining the exams that create a storm inside moments when my priorities i had to decide these are the few lines this introspection poem i have already published in my blog i think you wow i know so you have a blogger at merlin scribble yeah and like i told you i have other, i i'm in touch with other uh, poets and other bloggers and i look forward to a collaboration um from all of you ni ashala uh, ashale also writes our poetry uh, we have evelyn samadoko at adoko tales and you will be uh, watching her episode shortly so i look forward to a future collaboration where the three of you put your heads together and come out with something amazing sure. and now we want to understand a bit more about your professional background so tell us what are the things that led you into this professional space i see a lot of women especially in india going into stem stem as in the sciences technology engineering and mathematics so i see that a lot of women in india don't have a problem with math i'm not a math lover <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what led you into this space because as a lover of writing and poetry somebody would have thought that you would go into the performing arts industry or yeah. become a writer or a movie producer you know so tell us why you got into this aspect in terms of your profession and how that is uh, going yeah like uh, patricia already told you that i am a ui developer it stands for user interface i create website screens mobile screens so first when i joined for computer science and engineering so i was fascinated by the things of the facebook and how the website the google search in and everything i had a curiosity to know how these things work that drive me to knowing it more and i wanted it to be my profession because mm. i enjoyed writing coding even though sometimes it frustrated me finding bugs in it but i love what i do <laughs> every time i see on my phone there is an update to remove a bug and i'm wondering what kind of bug is crawling around and every time i need to update so it's good you mentioned that you need to tell us more <laughs> <laughs> so it's like writing coding i actually write react js code it is developed by facebook and um, 
these things developing ui screens it needs a creativity how the button should look and how mm-hmm. the functionality would be eased to the user caring for the people as a end user it is a great thing and when you see a smile on a person's face using your website or your mobile application it makes you joy it is your baby which exactly which the world it feels happy when you are known for creating something good so so what what are some of the interfaces that we see probably on facebook or on our cell phones that you you you, you've been part of or that you can uh point to as an example of the things that you do so that people can actually picture what it is and then decide if they want to go into that field as a a full-time you know profession it's like you see the login screen of a facebook and you want to make it more interactive like the mm-hmm. login should not be just a button it should be like something different you want it in your way that is the ui developer does it's okay. like putting animation to things adding more visually appealing to the to the uh, users to the people who are using it so that they don't have to use much of their brain it should be easily accessible to them easily understandable to them like using right. uh, money transfer for ui it's like oh using... so you, so you can you, you you can create emoticons as well yeah emoticons and everything so it is okay. makes you smile and which makes you happy in saying a website these are the things we do <laughs> Oh, that is amazing. And so for those of you who are watching us, Merlin is my guest in the studio today, joining us all the way from India. She is here to let us understand that whatever is your hobby or whatever is your passion, you can develop it to an extent that it becomes beneficial or rewarding to somebody outside your your own home. She started writing in her diary, what we call journaling, as a way to put her thoughts and her, her her voice on paper because as a child she didn't want to be the part of those who would raise up their hands and ask questions and that was where she was hiding her thoughts but then when she got into college and she had that aha moment a lecturer just made her aware look you've got a talent here you can actually take it to the next step and make it worth your while and she started going out, giving articles into newsletters, etc., and then also being part of Amazon Kindle publishing. And then, as she realized, she's got into this book, Ice Cream, Ari's Mystery, and it is taking her places. And I am honored to have her in the Parisus chat room today, telling us about this passion and her profession. So let us bring it to that icing on the cake where do you see yourself in the next five years because the world is now becoming smaller and smaller it's becoming you know a more digital era as we've all been talking about and i want you to help other people identify ways that they can build a career or find a profession that can connect them with the rest of the world. So we know about website developers. Now we know about UI developers. What are the other avenues that people can go into in this digital world and find a profession that can actually give value to them and also help them have a livelihood? yeah so from here in future i want to do two things first professionally i want to be in a good position better than this mm-hmm. like in higher management because i have seen women in tech they actually from the beginning there are many women but when it goes to higher levels there are few there are less percentage of women so i don't want to leave my career 
at the peak i want to to achieve more in career wise to a greater position and for my passion i want to make my book to be available to you as a movie i would try my best to reach the audience as a movie or a web series next and so write more books which will connect to people like me okay so for you to be able to write books that helps you connect more with your target audience and turn ice cream Aaron's mystery into a movie who knows somebody from bollywood or from hollywood or in ghana from gollywood will probably reach out to you and help you bring this to the screens of your viewers yeah and uh, we lost a bit of connection there, so I don't know whether you were able to touch on the points regarding other careers or other professions yeah. that our viewers can go research into or go into when it comes to the digital world. <laughs> okay, so we would wait for Melly's connection to be restored. We have been talking about passion along with profession, and she is telling us about how her love for writing developed. She was quite a shy person, and she took to writing in her diary to share her thoughts and opinions on issues that were trending or happening around her. And through that, she got a little confidence and in high school began writing and publishing her thoughts with a newspaper. A lecturer chanced upon it and encouraged and motivated her to take it on a higher scale. And as we realized, she has put those together, built on that capacity, and she has won the most rhyme uh, book that has been published in poetry that got her to win the India Asia record-winning book for her book entitled Ice Cream, Aaron's Mystery. And Ice Cream, for those who may be listening to the podcast, is spelled E-Y-E-S and scream as in making that loud noise. If we are unable to get her back into the studio, this is where I'll wrap up the session for today. I have enjoyed the show and I hope you have too. We would love to hear from you. If you want to appear on the show, please do not hesitate to reach out to me via my Instagram at DTM Patricia or on Facebook at Parasite Horizon. If you are watching this via YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that anytime we release a video, you will be part of the first to have access to it. Until next time, Oh, great. We have Mary back in the studio. So I would allow her to wrap up in terms of other opportunities out there in the digital world where people can carve a niche for themselves in terms of a career or a profession. So it's like currently there are great opportunity for us to start. There are many bloggers of WordPress.com which help you to start your website by your own and it's like free still you don't want to purchase your domain so you can start writing your thoughts and there are many people like you who want to who are going through the same problems or who want a emotional support like you they will hear you they will revert back to you so like i'm a great fan of stanley stanley said if you love writing you should write if you have a story to tell you should right don't think what others will think of you how you will convince the world what are your perspective they might take it otherwise but you should be able to listen to the both sides you should take the negative feedback as well as the positive feedback if you start writing you cannot expect people will all be in your favor you should expect negative feedback too so like someone has said prepare for the worst 
and you will get the best also <laughs> wonderful prepare for the worst and you will get the best as well because when you take all the feedback you can use it to improve upon whatever you're doing thank you so much merlin once again for joining us in the studio i hope to have you back on another session where i put you together with other bloggers and those who are into the poetry and arts for all of you to share your ideas with us so until next time so it's bye bye for me see you bye bye see you bye bye <laughs> bye